Deep in the bowels of Brattleboro, nestled into a small tree-lined hill, is a mysterious cave-like structure. Many are frightened by the fierce beasts that guard its entrance. But others regard it as their home away from home place to while away the hours where they're entertained by their friend and motorcycle mechanic, Stanley Lind. Stanley's shop is about as close as you can get to an old-fashioned general store anymore. The stove's always warm and there's usually a gaggle of bikers standing around telling each other lies. Usually if it's a nice day, the most popular day is Friday for those that are self-employed or Saturday morning for those that aren't self-employed. And what happens is they, a lot of people just come here and looking for a, a place to hang. Somebody, somebody came by here, just a local person that was walking by and said, well, we love to walk by here. They're not, they weren't motorcycle people. They said we love to walk by here. It's like walking by the zoo. You know, all you guys are all out there. And of course, I have people here that look like Indians and cowboys and everything else. So it, it is the zoo, you know? And I think what happens to a lot of people is they walk by expecting these really rough and tough bad guys to be here. And then when they all smile and say hi, they don't know what to do. They're lost, you know? Because underneath it all, they're just regular everyday guys. They just look different. Yeah, you take the cowardly lion, for instance, you That's know? Right. The first time I saw him, I thought, geez, I'm not gonna wanna get in his way, but he's one of the nicest guys. Yeah. Is that the guy that rides? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where's that ever all? Yeah. Ever wears a shirt? Yeah, yeah. Wears a shirt. 30 ever. below. He doesn't wear a shirt ever. Well, he'll put a leather jacket on when it's raining. Yeah. But the leather jacket he owns doesn't come all the way around to zip it up. Yeah, I saw him on the road the other day and he had a shirt on. Which was surprising. A plaid, a plaid flannel I, shirt, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A t-shirt. I think it was a t-shirt, yeah. Yep. I would say he's getting old. I'm really lucky because, you know, a lot of people have jobs. But it's pretty darn lucky, you're pretty lucky when you can work for people that are so passionate about this one thing in their life. They may hate their job, they may hate their spouse, they may hate their life, they may hate everything, but they love their motorcycle. So when they come here, it's like, take care of this, you know, and then get it back, and it's like, oh, it works again, that's great. And uh, so that's not many jobs like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. How long you known Sam? Over 30 yeah. years. All of them, yeah, all, way over 30 years, about 35. Making a tailpiece for a cafe racer. The actual tail there that he's welded on now is made from a uh, uh, Mercury outboard motor, 1950s Mercury outboard motor. I just like the shape. It's my welded suit, yeah. Why would you put uh, in the arms, anyway? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> my kid's coming for dinner this afternoon. I figured out he's bitty semi-clean. She's already embarrassed enough about me. There. Perfect. We're really green at Line Motorsports. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Don't get anything too sugary, I said. <laughs> oh, good. It's all... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we used to call them gut bombs. Uh, I mean, yeah, they used yeah, to well, fry them and dice that grease and they taste it. You they think there's taste. a reason for that? Someone, someone comes in and needs something, and Stan stops what he's doing and just uh, puts together what you need and, and helps you out. He does this a lot for many people, not just me. I, just, I see it every day. And uh, this piece that we're making is uh, to adjust the height of a hospital bed. We needed a special tool for it, so Stanley's making it up for us. We had one of those accidents where we were where we were uh, we were traveling down the road and on a motorcycle with a sidecar, and someone turned left in front of us, and uh, there wasn't much I could do, so I ended up running into him, and uh, the sidecar flipped over the top of the motorcycle. My girlfriend got got a crushed hip out of it and I got a pretty well smashed collarbone. Mine's mine's healing up faster than her hip. So she's still a 
candidate for a hospital bed. And uh, that's what's happening. We're getting it ready for her. When I was 19, and that was 1973, and I bought that motorcycle at the Harley shop for $1,100, and it was a really nice original bike, which I ruined, made a job out of it. I did the top end on that bike, and then I started working in my mom's garage. My father died a couple years after that, so my mother had nothing to do out there, but charge us all 50 cents every time we swore. So she came out with a little styrofoam cup and say, hey, the biggest, hairiest dude had to put 50 cents in the cup. So then I started working on other people's bikes so I could have mine. And uh, then I had a friend of mine, Bruce Lake, he and I worked together. And uh, we basically made enough money so we could go out on Friday and Saturday night and have all the fun we could afford. How was the bread? If you, it was great. You know, if you lift up your shirt, you're guaranteed to be in this movie. You know what they say in Brooklyn? No. Can you read lips? <laughs> Bad woman. Yeah, and they, so what they said to do is leave it right on there, you know, not yeah. to wipe it off. Right, and let the let it soak right in. Get your hands too. Yeah. And what I noticed is that on my jacket, now the jacket, like if you throw it in a pile, it crumples right into a little pile instead yeah. of like Makes conk and having stiff arms and stuff, right. you know. So this is a picture that Josh Steele gave me. You can see it or not, I'll probably be holding it at the wrong angle. But anyway, it's a photograph of those lamps up there, and that's the reason I bought this shop. Everything about the shop was, in, you know, if you can believe it, worse than it is now. And uh, so I saw those lamps, and they were painted, the whole front of this was painted white with house paint. So we stripped all the paint off the lamps first, and that was it. I took all the paint off the front of the building because in 1944, there had been a fire, and you can almost see it. Uh, see the like little where the smoke had been coming out of the building here and they had no way of really cleaning it so they just painted it and so then I didn't want the paint and we put cedar on that part down there which is actually a newer part but I actually have a photograph inside of some kids swimming right here in the flood of 38 right in front here. right in front here yep they're out there and they're about up to their knees or almost to their waist in water and there's some old cars here and stuff and those trees aren't there which doesn't seem believable to me, but I can't see any trees in that photograph. From 38? In 38, yep. So those trees sprang up fairly quickly. Let's go out and see what kind of good scrap you got. You must have something out there we can't live without. This is the place. Get rid of all your iron. You know, like tool steel and carbide. And high speed steel is all worth more money at the scrap guys, you know. Right. But you gotta separate it out, you know. If you just throw it in like like Butch did there, right. It's not worth as much, but yeah. it's it's worth doing, you know. Yeah. It's worth doing for sure. Usually the people that come here are real enthusiasts, not bikers. That's a different kind of person. An enthusiast is a person that actually rides his motorcycle and if it rains on it, it's okay. A biker is a, a dentist, a lawyer, a doctor. They bought a motorcycle. It's got 10 years old with 2,000 miles on it. He's a biker. That's biodegradable. That's the stuff they sell at Sennel's. Made in Maine. Best bike wash there is. Of course, Greg doesn't wash his bike, so it doesn't matter. Stanley got cancer last year and had to undergo a series of treatments, so his friends all pitched in and held a benefit for him. They rode their bikes out to Charlemont for a pig roast. And of course, when somebody broke down on the way, 
Stanley was right there to make the repairs. I don't know why people love him so much. I mean, Richard Davis is a friend of mine. He's a nurse. And he wasn't into motorcycles at all. When I moved to Guilford, he was next door and he came over and he kind of, uh, he uh, really, you know, he was like a little kid, you know. One day I just, here, ride this little Honda. And he rode it around. And then he bought a Honda from me. And then he bought a bigger Honda. And uh, so one day I had him write an article in the paper. And he says that uh, when you ride a motorcycle, it sort of, it relieves these endorphins in your body, it's sort of like drugs. So that's why when you are all stressed out over whatever it is you're stressed out over and you ride your motorcycle, when you come back, you're like a different guy. You're all kind of calmed down and stressed, unstressed. And so part of it's got to be that. Part of it is the fact that you're right out there. You know, when you drive down the road in your car with the radio on, you just don't smell the guy mowing his lawn the same way. You don't smell the wood stoves in the fall time the same way. You know, you don't see, you know, you don't see the birds flying along when they go just misses you you're going wow that was close you know and you don't get all of those experiences in a car you know that you do on a motorcycle here. I mean, I like the people around here and the people I hope like me, you know. Some probably don't, but that's okay. <laughs> I haven't met any yet that don't.